that the good, good father sent his son down so that we might live and that we might have life to the full. We thank you that all of our service this morning is all about you. It's all worship and what you're doing in this church, and we thank you for that. Jesus, we just ask that you continue to speak as we talk about what you're doing in this church. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I was looking for Lucy then, because she's coming to share. It's a bit awkward if she was, and yeah, come and join us, Lucy. So I'm going to explain to you what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks together. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, what it means to be Bethel, and uh, the sort of title is, is We Are Bethel, isn't it? So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about different aspects of different ministries in the church, and maybe you can guess what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, kids and, and the youth over the next short while together. Uh, so Lucy's going to be uh, kicking us off with that. Um, but I'm going to pray uh, for Lucy um, before she starts. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, God, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we get to share the exciting things that are going on in this church. And I pray as Lucy comes to share right now uh, that her passion will, will pour out on these people um, in the room today and that they'll develop a passion and a hunger to see young people's lives transformed by the gospel. Use her now, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, I'm going to start by putting my timer on because Kyle's like pretty hardcore with this stuff and he said, you've got this amount of time, do not go over it. So if you hear a beep, it's this, okay? So I've only got a couple of minutes to share with you. So I am going to talk really fast. So I do apologize right now. But the blessing you have is you can just go online later and watch it all again. So you won't miss anything. Um, so yeah, as Kyle shared, we are Bethel and this is the children's ministry. So I'm going to talk to you about everything that's going on during the week and then the highlights of in between as well. So um, we have a life group on Monday, just the same as most of you would. Um, and it's pretty much exactly the same as yours. It's a little bit more fun. We do games. We have snack as well, which is always a good thing. Um, but we do a Bible study together. We pray together. And we really talk about what's happening in our lives as well. So um, that's our Monday life group. I think we've got a PowerPoint come in. Is it working? It's not extravagant. It's just photos of what's going on. But um, after Monday then, we've got a blaze, which is every Wednesday... Oh, is it come on? Oh, no, that's not me, but that's all right. Um, so every Wednesday, we have our club called Ablaze. Um, and I love Wednesdays. And most of your volunteers here will say that they love Wednesdays too. Um, it's an hour-long club. It's 5.30 to 6.30 every Wednesday. It's for ages four and above. And we kind of start off with how's everyone's week's gone. We do a Bible story. Um, if I'm feeling up to it, I do a bit of a drama as well. They love that. Um, we do snack, we do games, we do crafts. But this club in the last year um, has gone from having nine children on our register to now having 64 children on our register. It is literally... I don't even know the maths on that, like quadruple, tri whatever. Um, but it has gone mad. And 16% of these children attend church. 84% are from our community. They don't know about Jesus. And they are learning every week about God's love for them. And um, most of you would have seen quite a few of them in Summer Shine and... They're just dying to tell you about Jesus. We've been doing Jesus' miracles, and every week they'll be like, he turned water into wine, and he did this. So if you ever see any of the Ablaze kids, honestly, go and speak to them, because they'll tell you everything they know about Jesus. It's great. Um, but yeah, so we have about 30 children. Um, well, we've been having over 30 children every week since about May time. Um, we've gone from three volunteers to five volunteers, and now needing six volunteers every week just to cover... Um, looking after this amount of kids as you can see there we're doing a, a let your light shine moment and um 
they love that. <laughs> Anything with the lights down and they just go wild. But these children are just absolutely amazing and getting to know them every week just fills us with pure joy, absolute joy. And Paula will tell you, every Thursday when I'm setting up from Bethel Baby, she asks me how Wednesday goes. And I get emotional most weeks, don't I? I'm like, something happened last night. And this is every week. Something is happening every week. Um, and it's just amazing. They're opening up to us now about what's going on in their lives. And they're saying they're getting bullied. And these are kids that are under 10 getting bullied. Some of them are not eating full meals. And they're telling us this. And it's just heartbreaking. But we've got to this stage now where they're telling us what's happening in our lives. And they're talking about Jesus as well. It's amazing. And now when week goes by... Where I don't have a parent come up to me from the school run and say, how do I answer this question? They've asked me about Jesus and I don't know. <laughs> so that's our Ablaze Club. And um, it is an amazing ministry. So on a Wednesday, if you are on your way home, half past five to half past six, pray for this club because it needs loads of prayer. These kids are amazing and they are learning about Jesus every week. So please pray for Ablaze. Um, Next is Friday, which is our Bethel Babies Ministry. Um, it runs every Friday during term time uh, from 9.30 till 12. I'm going to check my timer. I'm good. Um, and our ba Bethel Babies vision is we love because he first loved us. Uh, John 4 verse 19. And quite a lot of the time we'll have questions. Why do you do this? Like we went from 9.30 to 1.30 for quite a period of time and everyone was just like, why do you do that? Like, why are you opening up your doors? And that is simple. It's because we love, because he first loved us. And we run this group to show God's love to mums, to dads, to grandparents, to childminders. They are all coming through the door. And like, very much like a blaze this last year, we've gone from having about 30 to 40 babies um, that includes that doesn't include their parents as well. So we're looking at about 60 to 80 people just in the sanctuary um, to having on average 85 babies every week. That's not including their parents. We've gone from just being in the sanctuary to now having the sports hall and the minor hall. And it is jam-packed here every Friday. Um, we, we turn the minor hall into a sensory room, so it's, it's for the little ones, and there's lights, and there's, there's stuff in there. Um, the sports hall, as you can imagine, is just a free-for-all for all the toddlers. There's cars, there's bricks, there's balls. It's carnage in there, but it's brilliant. And then this room is split into a baby section and a toddler section, and it is just so busy. If you're ever thinking what to do on a Friday, come down and have a look. Come and chat to some of the parents because we run on pretty much four to five volunteers every week and we can't get around 85 guardians of these children to chat to them, to ask them how their week's been. Um, so come along, come and just chat to them. Everyone's in their coffee lounge as well, stuffing cake in their mouth. And if that doesn't uh, stop you from coming, I don't know what will. But um, yeah, and last week I had loads of different conversations, but the word that kept coming out of every single person's mouth was home. And it was really something that spoke to me because I, we'd been off for a week because we only run during term time, so they're very eager to get through the doors. As soon as we come in at nine, most of them are pulling up ready to come in. Um, but someone said to me, oh, it feels like home here. Yeah. And then another woman said, oh, look at her running round. She walks around as if she's at home. And then someone said, it's like our second home year. And that just, like, if that's not amazing from people who never come into this building to now come in every week without fail, thinking that this place is like their second home and their home, it's just absolutely amazing. It does make me emotional, but I, I've prayed that I will not get emotional during this. So um, there's something really special happening in this place, really special. And relationships are growing. Parents are asking us for prayer. We had a little girl, um, which most of you will know. I'm not going to say her name, but she is so, so small. And she loves Alex. She comes in every Friday and she's like, Alex, Alex. Um, but she had so much trouble 
from when she was about 12 weeks old all the way up until now, and she's still going through loads of things. But her mum was at her wit's end. She didn't know what to do. And she asked for prayer. And we prayed with her. Lynn, I don't know if she's here. She might be online. But Lynn is her favourite fan as well as Alex. And without fail, she'll go marching into Lynn every Friday to see where she is. And we've all been praying for this little girl. And she's getting better and better and better. And there's so much joy within her that it's just amazing to see. And something's happening on a Friday. So... I don't know what you do on a Friday, but if you can be here, just come and chat to people. People Like mums, for instance, are lonely. As much as we hate to admit, we've got a baby and we're so happy. We've got such a bundle of joy. It is lonely. And mums are coming here. They're coming here and it's feeling like a second home to them, which is just out of this world. Um, I'm going to move on before I start getting like... Oh. So live wires, <laughs> our Sunday morning club for all of your lovely children, um, grandchildren, which I just love. And I was out there and every Sunday I go in there and I see how awake they are and I go, good morning, live wires. And then you know by their response how awake they are. But I was just stood by there and I heard them all saying, good morning. So I ran in. I was so excited. I was like, I heard you. Um, but yeah, so we've had a brilliant year so far. We've done the Armour of God series, if you, as you can see up there. Um, for the parents, probably not so good because they came home with insane crafts every week, like shoes, T-shirts, swords, shields. But they absolutely loved that series. And just some of the feedback from kids challenging their parents, which is quite funny in the car, saying, well, actually, you need to put on your shield of faith because that'll, that'll help, and it's just brilliant. Um, we've just done a Hope, uh, Faith, Hope, and Love series, and just recently, we've just done the Fruit of the Spirit series as well, which has been really, really exciting. But what I will tell you all is never underestimate these children, okay? They are on the ball, and their faith blows me away each week. I went in there the other, way, uh, the other day, and I was just like, I'm going to talk about patience today, <sighs> which is my biggest. <laughs> and I was like, let's not talk about patience. They were like, Lucy, we need to talk about patience today. So they are on the ball, and they will challenge you, and their faith is just amazing. So much credit to you parents in the room, because they are brilliant kids. And come January, I'm not going to go too much into the future, but there'll be a lot of change in the way that we do Sunday mornings, okay? But I am so excited, and I've got four minutes, so I'm going to fly by. So Cheryl, I'm sorry, I'm going on fast mode. Um, summer shine. So this is our... Um, club in the summer, which was just absolutely amazing. We had 110 children attend our summer club um, this year. They got to know about Jesus every single day. We learned it through Bible stories, adventures in the forest, um, through crafts. We've seen so many children from Summer, Sh summer Shine come to a blaze on Wednesdays, come to the craft clubs during the summer. Um, but they left knowing that God loved them so much that he sent his one only son to die on the cross for them. And they had a chance, as you can see in the photo down by there, to actually close their eyes and really think about that love. And if they wanted to show love like Jesus, to put a ribbon on the cross. And as you can see, that group, there wasn't one child that didn't want to show love like Jesus, which is just absolutely amazing. So that was Summer Shine this year. And then lastly, um, the Life Party. So just probably about a week and a bit ago, we had 80 children, around 80 children and their guardians attend the Light Party on Halloween. And the place was transformed into a night where we celebrated the light and it was just amazing. We had bouncy castles, bouncy slides, obstacle courses, face painting. We had treats in all of the rooms upstairs, but most of all, we had Jesus in this place. And every single child, mum, dad, grandparent knew that. The kids went away with their little lights saying, I'm gonna let it shine, um, just like Jesus. And as you can see, all the sweets had something about Jesus on them. So it weren't just a case where they could just come for the sweets, open them up and rip them apart. They knew that there was no treat better than Jesus. 
which Kyle will still say how cheesy that is now. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so it was absolutely amazing. And a mum messaged me in the night. Um, I've never had the opportunity to speak to this mum. Her children come to a blaze, but it's kind of like a, hello, yay to children, bye. Um, but she thanked me. She thanked the church for the light party and how much her kids had the best time. But what she added at the end of her message was, praise God for such an amazing witness in the community. And I just thought that was just spot on it wasn't a place where we just came to have sweets it was a place where they got to know Jesus that night it weren't just going down the slides or the obstacle courses I nearly like popped a hip but it was about Jesus and it was just an amazing night but I am going to finish with this one because it's a big one and I know you're all going to bow your heads but I'm going to steer you out we are desperate for volunteers desperate in every area of our children's ministry. And you may think right now, oh, I can't do that, I can't work with children, that's past my time, um, I've done all that, I might not be of worth, but actually, you don't know how much worth you can be to these kids. It's all right, me and Kyle being the only face to these kids sometimes, but actually, we need people with experience. We need people who know the Bible from start to finish, who can tell these kids when they ask these questions what the answers are. Like, we, me and Kyle know a little bit, but you guys know more. Um, it could be setting up Bethel Babies on a, for an hour on a Thursday morning. It could be packing up at 12 on a Friday afternoon. It could be just coming to have a cup of tea and sitting and chatting to one of the mums or the dads or the grandparents. It could be setting up live wires on a Sunday morning and it could be helping on a Wednesday. Um, men in particular, I'm looking at you all now, we have one male leader in live wires on a Sunday. Thank you, Leroy. Um, but these kids, oh, sorry. These kids, I'm going, I'm going need male Christian role models in their lives. They need to see males on a Sunday telling them how much they love Jesus and how they're walking with Jesus. So men in particular for Sunday Live Wires, it's time to step up. I'm praying for you this morning. I'm praying for all of you. Um, but please come and speak to me after the service. Everyone will need to go through a DBS, but that's fine. I'm the DBS verifier. I can get this done like that. Um, but please, just, if you can't volunteer, that's fine. But ask me what times all these things are on, and I will tell you. And if you pray for these kids, because change is happening in these kids. They are, they, are, they are stirring up, and I'm just, Friday, I'm pumped for you all to hear about Friday. My voice has just come back from Friday, because I was like on the floor. But um, yeah, I'm going to hand you over to Kyle. But please pray for these kids. And come and see me if you want to volunteer. Sorry. No, that's fine. Lucy made it sound like I was staring her out when the timer went, and I honestly wasn't. <laughs> no, that's really encouraging, and um, so much good going on through the ministry, um, which is really... <laughs> Amelia, talk for two seconds while I sort this out. We're, we're, no, just talk with your mic. That'll be fine. Go on. Tell them a story that they need to hear. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Um, we have Lucy's no was so fluid. Upstairs What's going on? House, we have no heating at the minute. It only works downstairs. Oh, uh, so I tend to blast the heating downstairs. And then we're currently sleeping with two duvets. We're close to getting an extra blanket as well because it's so cold upstairs. That's my story. Are we ready? <laughs> now that was rough. <laughs> right, bang on half past so we know where we're going to. Wasn't that awesome though to you um, from all the good stuff that's going on in, in the children's ministry? And um, there was an ask at the end, so don't forget about that, uh, to get involved because no ministry runs with just one person. There's no ministry in the whole church that can do that. And... Um, if me and, me and Lucy wasn't employed, um, you guys could actually still run all the stuff. It's obviously helpful having a, a full-time person or a or, or paid person to be able to do that. Um, but if it was just me and Lucy, we wouldn't get very far, we lose. 
most of our events would be cancelled because we wouldn't have enough people. But we want to talk to you about uh, the youth and the Flourish project, which um, a lot of you would have heard about before, but some of you might not have, have heard about before. So we're excited to be sharing that. And we've also got a PowerPoint as well. Um, Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And when I heard about that, for me, that's something that has always stuck with me. Where we don't know, if we don't know where we're going, we don't know how to take the next step, do we? If we don't know our destination, if we don't know what we're trying to achieve, how do we know how we're going to get there? It's like the blind leading the blind. And I think um, Solomon, when he was writing the book of Proverbs, obviously understood that, that it's really important that we know where we're going. So in September 2022, uh, we launched our vision for the youth ministry, uh, which was to share the gospel with 2,500 young people uh, by the end of August 2025. So we were committing to the next three years of our, our biggest priority being that we want to share the gospel with 2,500 young people. We wanted to tell people, or especially young people, about the love of Jesus and, and what he does. And the reason that we went with that vision uh, was because... I believe God was, was saying that to me, uh, but also we could, we could measure it. We could measure success and, and where we were going, and um, that's a clear vision of we, we know by the end of August 2025, have we done it or have we not done it? Sometimes we try to, to measure success with just going, oh, I will reflect and, and we'll just chat amongst each other. And, so, and that does work, it absolutely, you do need to have a chat, but clear vision gives us, um, we can literally measure that. And I think that was, that was really helpful uh, for us in that. But also it allows us to share the gospel. So if I heard wrong from God, that that's not where he wanted us to go. You can't go wrong with sharing the gospel with 2,500 young people, can you? you? You absolutely can't go wrong with it. So if I made a mistake, that's absolutely fine because we're still doing what God would want us to do in sharing the gospel with those many young people. Uh, and as of this morning, we've shared the gospel with roughly 1,063 young people, which is awesome. I think there's, there is. So in 15 months, in September 2022, we shared the gospel with, on average, 71 young people a month and two young people a day. And in many ways which we share the gospel with young people and the one main one we will talk about, which is what Lucy referred to, um, which happened on Friday. But one of our biggest youth ministry arms, I've called it, or the main youth ministry arm, is the Flourish Project. So I'm going to let Amelia talk a bit about that. Okay. So the um, professional definition, I guess, of the Flourish Project is that it's a mental and emotional well-being project. Um, and it's designed mainly to be a preventative project for young people to give them tools and techniques to support themselves um, and their well-being on a daily basis. Um, and we do have young people that come to the project with um, existing diagnoses that they have or generally it's students that are like year seven to year nine that school staff have identified and maybe struggling a little bit and could do with just some, some help like we all could. Um, but we currently run the project in six schools, and they're all in roughly a six-mile radius of Bethel. Um, so we're in Tonnerevel Comp or Community School? Community School, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is Tonnerevel. Um, Apant, Gatholog, Brinklenog, Llanhari, and Rada High as well. Um, so like I said, we mainly work with students in the year seven to year nine age group, and they're all in eight-week blocks. So we'll have X amount of students for eight weeks, and then it rotates and goes again. Um, and we currently have Alex, Hannah, and Roz, who's upstairs as well, um, helping us and supporting us with leading sessions on a weekly basis. Um, and they're at all of our events, all of our outreach stuff. They're always there as well. And I know there's loads of other people that support in other ways, whether it's through prayer, financially in other ways as well. And we're so grateful for that because we literally couldn't, couldn't do it without you. I wouldn't have a job without you. So um, we're really grateful for that. Um, and I think the project's really important, not just because young people need it, but because it gives us an opportunity as the local church to step in and support schools with a re really real need that they have. Um, and I don't say that as like a talk and gesture or saying of like, oh, doesn't it look good? Like we can go into schools. But 
We go into school to meet the need that they are facing, and for whatever reason, schools can't meet on their own, whether it's because of staffing issues, or whether because they can't afford to have a well-being department, or whether it's because staff are already overrun. So we get to step in and provide expert stuff that has been proven and been tested, and that we see really good results from. And that's what we're called to do as the church, is to step in where people need it. And not just because it looks good to us and that we can put it on a PowerPoint or that um, we can put it on our banners when people walk in, but because it's what we're called to do as people of God. And the reason why we're called the body of Christ is because between all of us, we all have different expertise, so we can all go and do this stuff in different areas. Not everyone is going to do the Flourish Project, but you might have certain expertise that allows you to go and do a similar thing somewhere else for another group of people. Um, and I just wanted to make that clear today that this isn't just like a token thing that we get to do, but it's something that I and we really believe is really important. Um, a lot of students always ask, like, oh, why am I on the project? Because um, they normally get chosen by their teachers. Um, and it's simply because the Flourish project is for everyone. We all deserve a mental health and well-being education. I didn't get one when I was in school, but I can see how that would have been really helpful for me and probably would have saved me a lot of time as a 20-year-old if I'd known all that stuff when I was like 15. Um, and it's important to give young people the language to express the things that they feel and they struggle with, because quite often they feel in these things, but they don't have the words to actually communicate it. Um, and they should be able to support themselves and the people around them when they need it. Um, so the project encourages young people to unpack the things that they believe about themselves and why, and potentially helps them to create new positive thought patterns when they unpack that, um, so they can have positive and healthy habits. Um, it teaches them about the importance of support systems, having dreams and goals for their future, and maybe little things, I'll say in quotations, like learning how to give and receive compliments because I think we probably all know adults that don't know how to give and receive compliments, and we know how problematic that can be sometimes. Um, but the project itself is centered around open discussion, activities, and games, so that young people put into practice what they've been taught straight away, and it allows them to express themselves in a safe and caring and open environment. Um, so these are some of our stats. They're quite small, but they're on the screen on the second box. Um, so across all six schools in the last academic year, we saw a 13.15 increase in emotional well-being, 9.88% increase in self-esteem, and 15.89% increase in happiness. Um, and you might be thinking, where's the 50%, where's the 70%, the 95 100%? Um, but I'll explain why they maybe seem a bit lower. Um, so Jonathan Warren, he's a previous CEO of Norfolk and Suffolk NHS Foundation Trust, and he speaks about that um, any increase between 7 to 10% in this area is a significant increase. And if you think about it, in, from today, fast forward eight weeks, if your happiness had increased by 15.89%, you'd probably be a different person. So even though the numbers look low, if we think about it in our real-life circumstances, that's a really significant increase in the lives of those young people. Um, and teachers communicate that to us on a daily basis as well. OK, I've got two more things to talk about in terms of Flourish. Um, so two offshoots of Flourish are our graduation ceremonies and taster sessions. Um, so on the last week of Flourish, we invite all young people their families and their friends to a graduation ceremony that we hold here in Bethel. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to celebrate the young people for who they are and everything that they've achieved over the eight weeks in Flourish. Um, so they're invited with their family and friends and we decorate the sanctuary so it's like all gold and full of balloons and gold curtains and everything so it looks like um, a graduation ceremony. Um, the coffee lounge is full of cakes and sweets. Um, and we take time to explain what the Flourish project is, because quite often young people don't know what the project is when they come, so chances are their parents don't know either if they don't know. So, And we explain what the project is and why we as a church feel that it's important that we do it. Um, and we also have the opportunity to share the gospel with them, their family, um, and their friends. And we want every young person to feel important when they come in. So they get called up to the stage, we give them a medal, 
um, and they get a certificate as well. And this is the unique part of the graduation ceremony, is that on the back of every certificate for every young person, we write a message for them. Um, and the message is normally something about what gifts and traits we've seen in them, um, the things that they have done that have brought us joy while they've been on the project, and we offer the opportunity to speak into their future, to speak positively over them, and to just shower them in love while they're here, and we do it in front of their parents and in front of their friends, so that their parents can see that, oh, there's actually adults that love and care for my children, um, or, might be the first time that someone has spoken like that over that child. Um, so it's really important that we do that, and that we do it in front of people as well. Um, so quickly on our taster sessions, we took, or Kyle took, like all the best bits of the Flourish sessions and put them into one jam-packed hour. Um, and we run these sessions with year six students, like in the, uh, towards the end of the summer term. Um, so we run them in schools that feed into the secondary schools that we do Flourish in. Um, and it just helps give the students a taste of what the Flourish project is. They get to know who we are a little bit, so that when they go into year seven in, this, in their schools and they see us walking in the corridors, they know who we are, and they're not afraid to say hello. Um, and then if they are chosen to come on to Flourish, it's not like, a, oh my gosh, why am I here? Is something wrong with me? Because they know what the project is, and they know that um, it's all a bit of fun, really. Nice. So there's obviously a lot of stuff that goes on. <laughs> uh, so we run the Flourish Project for two main reasons, really. Uh, one, because we want to be a part of change and we want to improve the well-being and culture of the society and the schools that we work in. And, and two, because we want to give people an opportunity to hear about Jesus. Isn't that what we're here to do? To tell people about Jesus? Sometimes what we do is we think we're telling as someone about Jesus by how we act them. And we've got to show Jesus' love, haven't we? We've got to do that. But that won't get them to heaven. Them saying, oh, well, I had this person who was really nice to me. The gospel is what transforms people's lives. And those are the words that come out of our mouths. And we need to be a part of doing that. And I need to be better in doing that. Because sometimes we can get away with it be like, oh yeah, because I help in this ministry, I'm doing that. But what do our lives look like when we're not in this building? Could we all say that we're sharing the gospel well with the people that we encounter? I could do a lot better. So I want to introduce you to how uh, we run youth really quickly. So we talked about our vision being 2,500 young people to hear the gospel by the end of August 2025. This is how we do it. I hope you can see it, but if not, that's fine. So there's eight stages uh, to something we call our discipleship ladder. And we have this because we know where we want to take young people because we have a vision. And when there's no vision, people perish. But we know we have a vision. So we just need to work out how we gather and how we allow people to hear about Jesus. So there's eight stages to this discipleship ladder. And Amelia covers the first four you're like in control of those first four, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And then I'm in charge of the other four then. Do you want to quickly run through the first four, just really quickly? Yes, yeah, so obviously my number one is Flourish. Um, and then during Flourish, we'll start to roll out communication. So we have a weekly newsletter that goes out to all parents who want it. Um, we just kind of include what the young person has learned every week in Flourish. Because um, again, young people don't often communicate that to their parents. Um, and then we also advertise all our events through that as well for our newsletter. Um, I think we currently have 87 parents on the newsletter. Um, and then about halfway through the project, we'll have a Nerf night, which is our social event. So this still comes into communication. So we'll give every... <laughs> Neil said we'll he was going to do that. Every I'm sick of what's going on. <laughs> we'll give every young person a physical invite that they get to take home and invite with their friends. Um, and then that leads us on to step three, which is the Nerf night or the social event. Um, and then from that, young people are invited then to come next week to Friday Youth. Um, and I stay on Friday Youth until a young person has come for about three to four weeks. And then at that point, we move on to the second Friday yeah. youth, which is where Kyle comes And after in. like four weeks then, we would say like the young people have integrated into the youth if they've been coming for that long then. And then that's when we're trying to give them um, a spiritual experience, which is the next step then. 
And from that, if they decide that they want to follow Jesus, obviously there's no pressure from us to do that, but if they do decide they want to do that, um, we're then trying to plug them into life groups and then finally trying to get them uh, to be here on a Sunday morning, which is probably the, the hardest one, isn't it? Would you agree? Yeah. Because it's too uh, early. Yeah, yeah too early, Sunday, just Sunday. Church maybe is boring to them. That's probably the hardest one, isn't, mm-hmm. isn't it? Um, but our Nerf Gun Night, which is the social event that we run, is where we share the gospel um, the most out of every single aspect. Uh, so the, the photo in the bottom right corner, I know it looks a bit blurry, was Friday night. So we had our Nerf Gun Night here on Friday. So Neil, have you still got that gun on you? Do you want to point it in the air so if people have never seen? So if you look over there, if you look over there, Neil's got like a, a little fake gun. Do you want to shoot it if it can't be, is a bullet in it? There we go. There we go. <laughs> so that's our Nerf Gun Night. So basically we just spent a lot of money to have Nerf guns, make the church look nice, and we invite the people who go through Flourish, and the schools are really gracious in allowing us to go in and do leafleting, and they pile it through their class charts, send it out to parents. And um, Friday at like four o'clock, we had 204 young people book on, didn't we? So we knew it was going to be a really busy night. Um, and we had 140 young people turn up, which was crazy, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We always know, like, if 200 book on or 120 book on, we always know you're going to get a bit slightly less because we don't, we don't charge, so it's easy to book on and then not turn up. But yeah, 140 young people in this building on Friday. I can assure you it didn't look like this. It was, it was chaos, but actually it was, it was actually class, that's, wasn't it? That's, that's the better word to use. And in our three events, we've probably seen 250 young people come through these doors from Nerf Gun Night. So it's probably worth spending a bit of money on Nerf Guns, isn't it, to have 250 young people come through the doors near about God that loves them so much. And on Friday, I talked about storms and how Jesus can calm physical storms, but also mental storms as well and physical storms. And we talked about a story um, in, in Acts where Paul and Silas are in the prison and they're, in, they're lonely because they're in like the deepest dungeon. It's just the two of them and they're struggling, but they call upon the name of the Lord. They pray and they worship. And their storm that they were going through, they were set free because they looked up. And Jesus has the power to do that. And we had QR codes all around the building of like, um, we had like a, a wallpaper for your phone. Do you know when you like unlock your phone and you've got the photo behind all the apps? So we had that for people. And they said, don't believe the storm. And at the end of my message, I was able to ask people to like, if they want to, they can scan the QR code or go around. And, and John was in the balcony. He said he could just see so many phones going up to just scan that QR code. And I just said to them, like, if you want to get to know who this Jesus really is, we're here every Friday. Every single Friday we're here. We, we, we want to share. Um, we want to talk to you about Jesus. And if Jesus really can't, can calm physical storms, mental storms, spiritual storms, isn't that someone you want to get to know? because it's definitely someone that I want to get to know. So that was basically um, our Nerf gun night. Um, but our goal is simple, the vision. It's easy when you know your vision. When you know your vision, you, everything else follows. So that's why we run the Nerf gun night, because it fits into what we're trying to do. And like when 1,063 young people have heard the gospel in 15 months, then, you know, as a team, I think we're, we're doing something right and well, and it, it is really exciting. I think if you move, move over again, you can clap if you want to, yeah, that's fine. That was just a, just a, few, that was a few more photos, that was all, just, just so you can see a bit more of, of the night uh, from that. But I want you guys to know that in the youth group that, that we currently have, we have future leaders that will lead, but they won't lead like you've seen in the past. What you think leadership looks like now, maybe what it currently looks like now, in the future it won't look like that. The current generation don't want to lead like we've led before. They want to do something different. And maybe we even change how we call leadership and maybe we start calling it influencing. Because I'm not sure if they want to lead how it's been done before, but they do want to have influence. They do want to impact communities. They do want to transform churches, but it will look different. So the question is, are we allowing young people to change how we lead? And that's a question for us to think about. And there's young people in this ministry, and I tell them all the time, they will go on to lead ministries as well. They'll go on to be youth pastors. We won't be here forever. We'll be somewhere else, and, and someone will stand on this stage. There won't be me. Uh, they will come out of this ministry, and I'm, I'm sure of that. So we're thankful that we're able to share the gospel, but we're so thankful that we get to take the young people on a journey uh, as well. Really, really quickly, just share a quick, like, good story. Like, just one story. Just one. I know you've got a few. Just share one. Yeah. 
Um, just one. I am going to do one. <laughs> I think the, the one story that I would share is that from the Flourish um, cohorts that we had in March, um, there's three of the young people that were on Flourish they, that came through the whole project, came to the graduation ceremonies, came to the Nerf Night, um, and they are now part of Bethel Youth, and they've been coming for almost a year. Um, and it's been so amazing to see them get more integrated like into the group, like to see them making new friends. Um, and you look around and they're part of a community that loves them. They're surrounded by people that loves them, um, that love them. And to see the change in them from when they first walked into the classroom on week one of Flourish to Friday night is astounding. Yeah, I, I could be here for ages with stories as well. Like from Rwanda, there was a prayer meeting we had that was incredible, and what was coming out of that was awesome that I could share about. Um, or Tula that you heard about that, gave, that became a Christian on the plane on the way home from Rwanda, or Daniel who was baptized last week. Um, but one of mine was when we went to do a, a Nerf gun night in June in Trialo, and we took some of the, the older youth, and it was like the first time I'd really seen them stepping up and realizing that they're capable of doing so much more than where they're currently at. And I, and I saw that they're gonna be future influencers. Maybe we gotta stop using the word of leaders, but maybe influencers is, is the better word. Um, I think, apart from need, isn't it? Need is the same as Lucy, obviously with volunteers, but um, obviously you gotta be passionate about what we do. Um, that's the main thing. So you can support us physically, you can support us spiritually through prayer, you can support us financially because it obviously costs a lot of money to, to run these events. Also, Amelia's job is totally funded from people in this church that have given a lot of money, uh, but also through Garfield Western. Got to give them a massive shout out because they give us money as well. Um, but yeah, really encourage you guys to, uh, however you feel led, led to do that. Um, so I'm going to pray before we move on. I'm going to pray for, for the ministry, uh, the kids' ministry and the youth and flourish. Yeah, Jesus, we thank you so much for what you're doing in this church. We thank you that this church is not just about what happens on a Sunday, but actually so much more. And we're thankful for what we've heard today of all the exciting things that are going on, for all the young people's lives that are being transformed by the power of the gospel, for all the young people that have had a seed planted in them, that we pray they will grow, that we pray they will be watered, so that they may know about the incredible things you've done how you calm the storm. Jesus, we just ask that you keep doing what you're doing. Keep building this church. And I'm thankful that you keep using us as people who don't feel worthy, but called for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.